We just finished up this concept of apply equilibrium to go along with free body diagrams. One thing to mention here is in a 2D and two dimensional free body diagram, you have two equations. Your sum of forces in the x is equal to zero, and your sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. So those are your two equations. So that means you can solve for up to two unknowns with a single two-dimensional free body diagram. If you're working in three dimensions, you have three equations you can use. That's, of course, sum of force in x, y, and z. All of those are going to add up to be zero. So that's up to three unknowns you can work for uh, or work towards with a single free body diagram. Uh, remember our problem solving method that we talked about previously that if you don't have as many equations as you have unknowns, that means you need to. Um, find another set of equations basically and, and what that amounts to is that if you have more unknowns than you have equations from one free body diagram then what you can do is draw a free body diagram of if you've drawn a free body diagram of your whole system you can then draw a free body diagram of part of your system or a different part of your system and then that once you apply equilibrium to that new free body diagram now you'll have a new set of equations that you can use and there will often be forces that show up on both the whole system and part of the system or maybe the same force may be acting in two different parts of your system and so you're not adding more unknowns by adding more equations and, and then when we get through chapter four we're going to talk about moments of a force or torque and that's going to then add additional equations that you'll be able to solve for unknowns from. All right, so let's look at an example here. Just a simple example. Uh, let us, we're going to find the force and angle needed for equilibrium. Start the page here. Four, page three of something. And so this is the example. It's it's just gonna be a bar of some kind. So we can model this as a particle. We're going to have a vertical 50 Newton force going straight up from the top. Somewhere on this side, we're going to have a force going up at an angle, also 50 Newtons. This one, we're going to describe the geometry with a 4, 3, 5 triangle. Then there's going to be a horizontal force coming out to the left over here of 120 Newtons. And then at the bottom, there's going to be a force applied at some unknown, so an unknown force F at some unknown angle theta. And that's what we're looking for here, is find the magnitude of this force and the angle theta needed for this object to be in equilibrium. Now, this might be okay for a free body diagram, as is. This is Honestly, I, I, there would be nothing wrong with this. My preference for a free body diagram, and if I'm being honest, if I can, I very much like to go ahead and resolve all the forces into their X and Y components. So both the 120 and the 50, they're already in their X, Y components. So I'm gonna draw those as is. I've got 120 Newtons going to the left. That's the negative X direction. 50 newtons going up in the positive y direction. But then these two forces have x and y components, so we're going to go ahead and resolve those. So if we start with this one, right, um, the, again, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle 
that we're using to describe it. So instead of an angle like this one, where I'm about to do a sine and a cosine here, we're going to use the components of this triangle, a similar triangle, to describe um, how much force is in each direction. So since the four leg of this triangle is in the horizontal or the x direction, that means that the component is going to have four fifths of the magnitude. So four fifths of that 50 newtons is going to be in the x direction. The other way you can think about it is if, if we had an angle here, we might call it phi. I know it's a little too small to see. But if I had an angle phi here, the cosine of this angle phi would be 4 over 5. And the cosine of this angle would be what's in the x direction. So 4 fifths of 50 newtons in the positive x direction from this force. Also in the positive x direction, we have f times the cosine of theta. And then I've got y components of both these forces, so going up, so notice this one is going up and to the, uh, to the right, so uh, this is a positive y component. Up here, 3 fifths of 50 newtons. Again, this 3 is in the vertical position, so that means that's the, the vertical component of this 50 newton force has 3 divided by the hypotenuse, 5. 3 fifths of 50 newtons going up. And then going down in the negative y direction, I've got f, and the, the vertical is going to be opposite of theta here, so it's going to be sine theta, f sine theta in the negative y direction. So this is normally how I will draw my free body diagrams, is where I've resolved all the forces. Again, this might be sufficient, but this is a lot easier to apply equilibrium, from which to apply equilibrium, because, again, to apply equilibrium, that means I'm going to write sum of forces equal to zero in the x direction. And this is basically just a placeholder. We're going to write it, but it, it really, it, it's going to add up to be zero. This is saying I'm going to add up all the forces. They're going to be equal to zero. And then I go add up all the forces. Uh, so I've got in the positive x, four-fifths of 50 newtons, this one here, plus this one, also positive f cosine theta and then this one is the negative x direction this is 120 so this is minus 120 newtons you can write equal zero at the beginning you can write it at the end you can write the negative terms you can write these terms in any order so long as you get the signs straight i'm a little lazy here and, and so if i write a positive term first i don't have to write a plus sign there at the beginning uh, so i'll do that a lot of times out of habit but notice since all these forces are resolved, all the x direction forces are already picked out and easily set up. So that means when I write sum of forces in the x direction, all I've got to do is look what forces are going left to right and then just add or subtract them into this equation. And it makes it real simple. That's, I mentioned earlier in the previous video, my, my statics professor was always hard on us about if there's no free body diagram, um, there's no partial credit. And that's, that's simply because it's so easy to just, if you've got a well-designed free body diagram, writing these equations are very simple. Uh, I'm going to do this one pretty quick. All right? So in the positive y, I've got 3 fifths of 50 newtons. Under that, I've got another positive 50 newtons. And down below, I've got minus f sine theta in the negative direction. And so you see how easy that is to do because these are all set up. Write the forces that are up or down. Put a negative sign on the down ones, and now that equation's ready to go. And if you look at this equation, how many unknowns do I have? Remember our problem-solving process. I've got a set of equations. How many unknowns? Well, there's one, two unknowns, and I've got two equations here. And again, don't, don't think so much about these sum forces. Think about the other side of the equation there. So I've got one, two equal signs, one, two unknowns. Two equations, two unknowns, I can solve that. I always like to say the engineering work is done. Right? And when I, for me as a professor, as an instructor, and as, as a grader, when I go to grade a problem like this, a lot of times my test problems are 25 points. Um, if these are the only equations you need to solve the, the problem, I try really hard, if these are correct, to get you to at least 15 points. Um, maybe even if, if the problem is this simple. This is a little simple for a test problem, but if the problem is this simple, 
I might get you pretty close to 20 if these are correct, especially if you do some algebra to get there. Now, a common mistake um, that I will see is somebody, some people may say, well, this is fx cosine theta, and this is fy sine theta. And now you've got three unknowns. Now fx is unknown and fy is unknown as well as theta. Now that's three unknowns and I can't solve that. And that's actually not correct. You could write this as fx and fy, but you don't then include the angles, right? So basically what I'm saying is if I call this fx and fy, I could do that, um, but then don't apply the sine and cosine theta there. Just find the x and y components and then do some trigonometry to find convert from x, y components to magnitude and direction. Either method's just fine. Go for it, whichever way works for you. Um, if you haven't already calculated these, I'm hoping you get in the habit of calculating these as you go. Uh, if you haven't already calculated these, pause the video now. Get your calculator out. I'm hoping it's already sitting there next to you. You know how to do this now. Um, if we do some algebra here, right? Uh, so notice we got, this is uh, f cosine theta is equal to, I'm adding the 120 over, this is 40, 4 fifths of 50 becomes 40, so 120 minus 40 becomes positive 80 newtons, so f cosine theta is a positive 80 newtons, f sine theta, uh, so this is 3 fifths of 50, that is 30, this is plus 50, so it's 80 and add this to the other side of the equation, f sine theta becomes also 80 newtons. So um, what you can do here is you can say, well, these are both 80 newtons, so I can actually set those equal to each other. f cosine theta is equal to f sine theta. All right, well, assuming f is not zero, then you can say, well, um, that means cosine theta is equal to sine theta. Now, if you remember what this is, you know it's 45 degrees, but if you need to prove it to yourself, what you can do is you can say, well, one is equal to the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. Sine over the cosine it becomes tangent, tan theta. So then the arc tangent of one becomes theta. And the arc tangent of 1, if you run that through your calculator, as long as your calculator is in degrees, you're going to get back 45 degrees. So if that's 45 degrees, then uh, if I run, now I plug this in. So with 45 degrees, cosine theta, 45 degrees, uh, divide 80 newtons by that quantity, that gives you F. F then becomes 113 newtons. You can't see that. There we go. Okay, and those are your answers. Box in your answers, underline them, make sure they're easy to find. Right? Notice how clean and simple this is to follow, right? What are you looking for? What's, what's known about it? What equations, laws, or rules can you, or tools can you use to find it? Do you have as many equations as you have unknowns? Yes, go solve it. Whatever you gotta do to get there. Right? All right, that's it. Pretty decent stopping place. This is a little short, but we'll pick up on the next one.